Your Minnesota Fighting Vikings allegedly, allegedly absolutely turned in a turd burger on Sunday at Historic U.S. Bank Stadium, losing, again, allegedly 40-3 to against the uh, dece- deceiving Dallas Cowboys. So whatever. But we got some hard truths, uh, but also the season is not lost. So I understand. Throw yourself a little pity party. Oh, this team was fraudulent. Please. So 8-2, and two, what to do. Uh, so let's move on with life. Truth number one, Vikings got embarrassed on Sunday. It, it was an absolute ass-kicking. There's no two ways about it. 40-3, uh, 458 yards of uh, offense allowed to Dak Prescott and company. 12-17 on third down, just domination. Cousins got sacked seven times. Yeah, three points uh, with an offense with Jefferson and uh, Dalvin and Hawkinson and Kirk Cousins. You had three points. It's just ridiculously bad, man. You you were in the red zone one time. <laughs> it, it's just ridiculous. So again, uh, the, there's no two ways about it. The Vikings got their ass kicked. It just sort of is what it is. Uh, truth number two, Kevin O'Connell failed his team on Sunday, and he admitted it. He admitted that he did not do his best coaching job both in-game and leading up to it because we warned this team. That after the big time emotional win against Buffalo, uh, you know, putting the game chains on Patrick Peterson, winning in overtime, dramatic fashion, all, all that stuff, it was going to catch up to you at some point. And the Vikings came back home against the Dallas Cowboys. Vegas is always right. They made the Cowboys favorites on the road, even though the uh, Cowboys just got embarrassed uh, by blowing a lead against the Packers. And uh, Kevin O'Connell, he didn't get his team in the right frame of mind. It was clear that they were sort of sleepwalking through that first half, and then they quit, and then they got lethargic, and there was just no juice. There was no energy. There was an emotional hangover, a la Minneapolis Miracle, into 38-7. And you can't have that because not every game is going to be a blow, whether a win or a loss, right? So uh, there are going to be times where you win close at the end. You have to compartmentalize, and you have to move on to the next game because when you're getting your ass kicked in the next game, you can't be like, hey, remember last week? That was really cool, especially not in the playoffs where it's a one-game season. You literally cannot have that. So uh, I think this could serve as a good lesson and going forward where and now we're going to see you know what kind of coach Kevin O'Connell is and we'll get to that in a sec uh truth number three the season's not over the Vikings are indeed eight and two uh, which is the second best record in the National Football League uh and then they just had a seven game winning streak which is pretty 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 good so the Vikings uh that's the wrong one Ooh, nailed it Vikings are currently still the two seed in the NFC uh a two game lead over the three seed Seattle Seahawks as of right now and they're sitting pretty. And uh, we, we said this in the recap video. So if you're a fan before the season, Kevin O'Connell and Quasey come in, all, all that stuff. And we after week 11, we were going to tell you that the Vikings would be 8-2. and two. They would have a, a nearly insurmountable lead in the NFC North Division. Lots of Vikings fans would have traded like body parts, digits, left versions of, of body parts uh, for this situation. I, I, I understand. Oh, they just got exposed. Whatever. It, it, it's one game. Still counts the same in, in the win-loss column. So I am not sweating at all. This is still a good football team that just got a wake-up call, and now they're pissed. And also they still have four other next five games at home. So uh, it's setting up to be a pretty good situation for the Vikings. Uh, next up, Keener, uh, truth number four. Now we'll see how well Kevin O'Connell coaches because it's very easy to be front-running. When your team uh, is going out and winning these uh, one-score games in dramatic fashion, it's very easy to be the cheerleader, the rah-rah, sis, boom, ba. And when the team is up, 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 Kevin O'Connell, he could have done a better job bringing them back down to earth, especially after that Bills game. But now that they're down in the dumps, we get to see the other side of the coin. What kind of coach is he uh, picking his team up? by their bootstraps after they just got embarrassed. Now, I mean, if this team has pride and character, it shouldn't take much. I mean, as a grown-ass man in a sport, uh, getting embarrassed on national television, that shouldn't be your bag. So the Patriots should be in for an ass-kicking of their own uh, on Thursday night, hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, Next up, uh, truth number five. The offensive line needs to step the F up. They do. Where I don't care that Derrissaw is out. I don't care that Ezra missed some time either. It's, uh, next man up mentality. I mean, Blake Brandle played pretty well against the Bills. And then it all fell apart against the Cowboys. And, I mean, the Cowboys, I mean, respect. Michael Parsons one of the best edge rushers in the game. Uh, and their pass rush as a whole, it's it, it's above average. Like, it's not elite. Like, it's not even on the Washington level. Uh, but they tore the Vikings ass up. They absolutely got after it, man. And uh, DQ wasn't even putting out anything fancy. It was four-man rushes on five. Now, that could be a problem in itself where Kevin O'Connell's play calling needs to help them out, uh, maybe adding the tight end, having a running back stay in, but they're just 
completely getting obliterated. And guys need to step up. Kirk was sacked a career high seven times. Unacceptable. And the way that Kirk Cousins has been uh, battered around this season, uh, looking at the Bills game, looking at uh, the Washington game, it's amazing that he's still doing what he's doing. So the offensive line, even though it has greatly improved, this still has to get better. I mean, this uh, this still has a chance to be a special season, uh, but it all starts and ends with the offensive line. Next up, truth number seven, Diesel Dalvin Thompson needs to get back. All right, so I understand he's been having that calf injury since the Arizona game, and they want him 100% before he gets back. But, I, I mean, James Lynch has had his moments. Uh, Kyrus Tong has had his moments. Uh, Ross Blacklock has had his moments. But Diesel Dalvin is one of the best five techs in the league. Like he plugs up the run. Uh, it's night and day difference with or without him. He also, he's been an underrated pass rusher. So they need to get Diesel back with Harrison Phillips and actually get some meat back uh, along this defensive line because it's way too easy shifting the line of scrimmage. And how many times did you see against the Cowboys where Pollard or Zeke would be through the offensive line and pass the line of skim- scrimmage like two, three yards before he was even contacted? I mean, that's how bad uh, the Vikings defensive line got their ass kicked uh, yesterday. Truth number seven, Dantel needs to get more aggressive on defense. Where, I mean, hey, when you're getting pressure with four and Zadarius Smith and Daniil Hunter are doing uh, amazing one-man things, I mean, yes, I mean, that's very easy. And also, when you're getting turnovers, when you're getting some puck luck when it comes to the ball bouncing, when you're getting uh, some meatball interceptions, hey, our, our defense looks really, really good. But no, sitting back and watching life happen, it's not how it happens, man. So if you're going to win, if you're going to bet, bet big. Bet big, win big. That, that old thing where Dontel needs to start. If you can't get home with four, send some more. Sun Tzu, send five, send six. Man up across the board. It's like, oh, we don't want to put our rookie cornerbacks in man-to-man situations because they might get beat. Well, if they play eight, nine yards off the receiver, they're going to get beat every single time. So Dontel needs to amp up the aggression. They can't just sit back and watch. Otherwise, he needs to be replaced. And Mike Pettin needs to come out. Something like that. Next up, truth number eight. Jefferson has to rise above. So Jefferson is the best wide receiver in the National Football League, but apparently not against the Cowboys, where he's traditionally struggled against Trevon Diggs and company, uh, but only three catches, 33 yards on five targets. Now, yes, part of it is Kirk Cousins had absolutely zero time, and he was getting sacked over and over. The Vikings had to get one-dimensional late in the game. I I fully understand that. But, I mean, Jefferson, even when everyone knows he's getting the ball, He's got to rise above. Like He has to be better uh, than this. He has to get open more. He has to do all these things, and he knows it. Like He's a fiery competitor. Like It pisses him off to no end that, that his team got their ass kicked and their offense was so morose, and he only had three catches for 33 yards. So I think 18 is going to internalize this. And, I mean, the Patriots have a damn good defense uh, in, in their own right, but uh, I think that he could potentially take it uh, to Belichick, Jack Jones, and company. Uh, next up, truth number nine. Dalvin needs 20 plus touches a game. Now, now if Dalvin Tomlinson got 20 touches a game, that would be kind of nice too because 20 fumble recoveries or interceptions, we'll take it. But uh, Dalvin Cook, I mean, he was one of the only guys on offense that was consistent and did not give up and just got after it. 11 uh, carries for 72 yards, 6.5 yards per carry. He was running angry and. The Vikings absolutely cannot get one-dimensional. And that was the reason why the levy broke uh, against that pass rush because they knew that they weren't running. They knew that they were throwing and all that stuff. And running the ball allows you to control the clock, keeps your defense off the field, beats up the front seven, trying to tackle Dalvin over and over and over, gets you positive yards. So it's not a second and medium and then third and short as opposed to second and long and third and long and set, uh, keeps play action alive and just keeps the heat off of Kirk Cousins. So, I mean, Dalvin is still that guy. And if the Vikings offense is going to do anything significant down the rest of the season in the playoffs, number four needs to be touching the ball. Uh, lastly, truth number 10, the NFC North is still ours. And even though it's very easy to be all crying and, eh, and the Vikings are fraud, shut up. Shut your face. Vikings still have a four-game lead in the NFC North, ahead of the Lions, by the way, and also a game in hand against Detroit Packers and the Bears. Those are the only three remaining road games for the Vikings also. And the slate, I mean, it still stacks up favorably uh, because even though the Patriots, tough, the Jets' defense is tough, Colts showing some flashes, Giants are still tough even though they lost the Lions, Uh, Vikings still have four to five games uh, of the uh, upcoming schedule at home. And then they only travel in division, so it's not even that long a trip. So the Vikings, you know, these last eight games, excuse me, last seven games, 
I mean, still have a chance to make some noise. I mean, they still have a chance to finish strong. They still have a chance to uh, secure uh, that two seed, maybe even that one seed if Philadelphia slips up a time to. Hey, because Philly still has to play uh, the Cowboys. And they still have to play the Giants twice. And the Giants are, are not as bad as they showed against Detroit on Sunday. So, even though I get it. I get it. Sunday was not fun. It's one game. It was one frigging game. And guess what? There, there's not a lot of time to wallow in it. The Vikings have to get ready for the Patriots. And like I said, if this team has any pride or character at all, they will bounce back. They will punch the Patriots in the face. And they will continue to punch. And they will continue to fight. That's right, man. But uh, your thoughts are thoughts. Tell the truth Monday after the Vikings' alleged 40-3 loss against the Cowboys. Uh, let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comments section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.